There's a lot of misinformation about astronomy, and exoplanets in particular. The idea of discovering planets outside our solar system is still only a few decades old, and so there's a lot we don't know. That's a great opportunity for misinformation to become rampant, and it doesn't take much effort to see it. One of the reasons I made this channel was to stop exoplanet misinformation in any way I can. So, here are what I consider to be the top 5 biggest myths or false information about exoplanets I've seen, and why they're wrong. At the end of the video, I'll also be saying why this misinformation got so common, and what you can do to avoid it. There's a lot to cover, so I'm just going to get right into it. Number 5. The Size of HD 10546b HD 10546b is thought to be the largest exoplanet we've ever found. It's often described as almost the size of the Sun, and some sources even say it's 752 times the mass of Jupiter. This means HD 10546b actually has two pieces of misinformation, its mass and its radius. The mass is easiest to refute. HD 10546b is nowhere near 752 Jupiters. That mass would make it a K-type star and not a planet. That number came from a typo on the NASA exoplanet website that went unnoticed for years. The NASA exoplanet site is a complete mess, and I explain this more in my separate video about the J1407b myth. The true mass of HD 10546b isn't well defined, but it's likely somewhere around 60% more massive than Jupiter, not 752 times more massive. But anyways, the radius of HD 10546b is a bit different from the mass. Despite what many videos say, we actually have no idea how big HD 10546b is. Before I explain why, just know that this is true for all the largest exoplanets, like Roxas 42bb, which I've seen people say is bigger in radius than the Sun. With planets this large, we can't accurately determine their size. This is due to the large amount of dust that usually surrounds these worlds. HD 10546b is extremely young, and so surrounded by huge dust clouds from its formation. These dust clouds have likely interfered with size measurements of the planet, and it's possible that HD 10546b is far smaller than what it's estimated to be. It's even possible that we've got both the mass and radius of this planet wrong, and HD 10546b is actually just a normal sized ice giant like Neptune surrounded in a ton of dust, but this is unlikely. However, even accounting for the dust, HD 10546b and other planets like it are still very large. This is because of how gas giants form. When planets like HD 10546b form, they're extremely hot. Because gas expands when it gets hot, this causes young gas giants to puff up, with their atmospheres expanding to far larger than they otherwise would be. As HG 10546b and the other planets like it cool down from their formation, they'll get smaller in radius until they resemble typical gas giants. But just know that for now, the size of HG 10546b is not confirmed, and there's a wide variety of things it could be. This is true for almost all large exoplanets like it, including Roxas 42bb. Number 4. 55 Cancri E, aka Janssen, being made of diamonds. 55 Cancri E, which is officially named Janssen, is an exoplanet about 8 times the size of Earth that many people think is made of diamonds. This is unrelated, but Janssen has actually been named Janssen since 2016, but for some reason nobody knows this. People still use the outdated name 55 Cancri E. I talk about why in my video called How to Name an Exoplanet, but that's not the topic of this section. Janssen is one of the most popular exoplanets known so far, and because of this, there's all sorts of misinformation. The more popular an exoplanet is, the more myths about it tend to exist. The most common of these is that Janssen is literally made of diamonds. This is not confirmed to be true. The reason people think Janssen might be made of diamond is due to the amount of carbon in its star. Copernicus, the star Janssen orbits, is unusually rich in carbon, and since planets and stars form out of the same material, it's been thought that Copernicus's five known planets could be similarly carbon-rich. In the case of Janssen, conditions are right on the planet to turn large amounts of carbon into diamond, which could make up to one-third of the planet's mass. Density measurements of the planet seem to support this, but it's unknown if this is actually true. So far, there's no definitive proof that Janssen is a carbon planet, and so there's no proof that it's one-third diamond. There is, however, evidence of it. But it's dishonest to say that Janssen is the diamond planet right now, because we just don't know. But even if Janssen isn't made of diamond, it's still an extremely interesting planet. Covered in a global lava ocean, likely possessing an incredibly thick atmosphere that we have evidence for thanks to James Webb, it's a shame that a planet this interesting has so many myths about it. Number 3. Pitch Black Planets You might have heard of Trace 2b, or Wasp-12b, both hot Jupiters that are apparently darker than coal. They've been described as pitch black, and almost all the light hitting them is absorbed. This is true, however, is misleading. Yes, these plants do absorb almost all the light hitting them. However, this is negated by the fact they are extremely close to their stars. Yes, they are technically dark, but if you were to visit these planets, they wouldn't look dark. This myth isn't so much about misinformation as it is just being unclear what people mean when they say dark. 
Even if only 1% of the light that hits these planets are reflected back into space so you can see it, these planets will still appear incredibly bright. If you were looking at these supposedly pitch black planets from space, they would just look like normal gas giants, not any darker than usual. An example of this in our own solar system is the moon. The moon's surface is darker than asphalt, yet it still looks very bright even when seen from space. This is because even though the moon's surface is dark, the sheer amount of sunlight hitting it at all times makes it appear bright. This same process will be amplified to the extreme on Trace 2b and other gas giants that are supposedly dark, making them appear bright anyway. Number 2. Habitable Exoplanets This is by far one of the biggest and most prevalent exoplanet myths, enough so that I've made a full video about it. Everywhere you look, there are channels claiming that NASA found Earth 2.0, something that never happened, or that we've discovered planets better for life than Earth. For some reason, people have also gotten confused about the existence of super-Earths. A super-Earth is a rocky planet bigger than Earth, not a planet more habitable than Earth. For some reason, there are a lot of AI misinformation channels claiming super-Earths are super-habitable, but that's not what the category means. Because I've made a full video about this, which I'll link in the description, I'll keep this section short. Kepler-22b, for example, is likely not a rocky planet at all and has no solid surface to speak of, likely making it uninhabitable. Kepler-186f is likely very cold, and because its atmospheric composition is unknown, it could just as easily be similar to Venus or Mars than to Earth. The TRAPPIST-1 system is being actively studied by JWST, and many of the planets are being found to have little to no atmosphere, making them similar to Mercury and the Moon. Proxima b is literally worse than hell, and it seems that everything could go wrong for that planet is. And there isn't enough information on the other candidates, like Kepler-452b, to say anything. Every single exoplanet we've found so far that has claims to be potentially habitable probably isn't. Don't get me wrong, the chances of some of these places being habitable do exist, they just aren't high. So far, there are no known exoplanets that are habitable. One of the more recent ones is K218b, an exoplanet that was recently studied by the James Webb Space Telescope and found to have hints of dimethyl sulfide, a chemical that on Earth is only produced by life. The JWST data also seems to suggest that oceans were present on the planet. However, both the dimethyl sulfide and the oceans were not detected strongly enough to be confirmed and remain only candidates. In fact, the data has multiple interpretations, and oceans made of molten lava on K218b actually fit the data better than oceans of water. Alternatively, K218b could just be a Neptune-like planet. However, while I'm on this topic, I want to address a different myth. On my Habitable Exoplanets video, I got a ton of comments saying that this is evidence that Earth is completely alone in the universe, or that's the only planet with life. This is not true. We've discovered 5,600 exoplanets at the time of making this video. Of those 5,600, the vast majority of them are gas giants, ice giants, or hot rocky plants like Mercury and Venus that don't have a chance of being habitable. There are only a few dozen candidate habitable planets. Of all the habitable planet candidates, only a handful are actually good targets for study anytime soon, and the rest we can't study so we won't know what they're actually like. And of the fraction of a fraction of a fraction of all the planets we've seen, none are confirmed to be habitable. This is nowhere near a large enough sample size to make any big conclusions like us being alone. There are over 1 trillion planets in just the Milky Way alone, and less than 20 of them being uninhabitable doesn't mean anything. Exoplanet science is still far too young, and we haven't discovered enough planets to confidently say that we're alone or not, or even if Earth-like planets are common or rare. We still have no idea, and anyone claiming that we are alone in the universe because we haven't discovered any planets with life, or that life is common and everywhere because we have many candidates for habitable planets, are both wrong. But anyways, it's time for number one, J1407b. There's so much false information about J1407b that I've made not one, but two full videos about it. To put it simply, J1407b is not a planet and does not have big rings. It's instead a rogue brown dwarf, not orbiting any star at all, and its rings are actually debris disks around the object where new planets are forming. This is what the most recent data seems to suggest, meaning J1407b doesn't actually have its iconic rings, and is not a super Saturn at all. This is, in my opinion, the biggest and most damaging piece of exoplanet misinformation that exists today. For a full explanation of why we know this, and how the J1407b myth got so popular, check out my video called Why Did Everyone Fall for the J1407b Myth? The sources for how I know this are also in the description of that video. So, those are some of the biggest myths relating to exoplanets, and why they aren't true. There are a ton more I didn't cover in this video. For example, there's a strangely high misinformation about color. The planet GJ504b, for example, is described as being pink, but it isn't. I plan to make this a series so I can cover more exoplanet myths later, but now it's time to explain how you can avoid myths like this in the future. It's very hard to come across information like this video because people are terrible at space communications. 
Astronomy results are often outdated after a few years, and it doesn't help that headlines are clickbait into oblivion constantly. The combination of clickbait, the difficulty of getting into astronomy, and the fact that the average person doesn't know or doesn't care how space works, all work together to make the public perception of astronomy and exoplanet science absolutely bursting with misinformation. The myths I covered in this video are only some of the most common out of thousands. So, what can you do to avoid space myths like this in the future? Unfortunately, this isn't easy, especially because of AI and the never-ending flood of misinformation it's creating across the entire internet. AI misinformation channels are so common on YouTube today, they're nearly impossible to avoid. I said this in my J1407B myth video, but I'll say it again. If you see any channels like the ones I'm currently showing on screen, do not engage with them. Do not click on these videos. Don't dislike them. Don't post comments saying it's misinformation. All you're doing is giving them a free view, and dislikes and mean comments still count as engagement. By doing this, you're only helping them. The best and only thing you can do to stop these misinformation channels is to block and report them whenever you see them. Don't do anything else, it isn't worth it. And unfortunately, misinformation about exoplanets is so insanely common that Google search results have been poisoned by them. Again, this is explained more in my J1407B myth video, but essentially, once one article is made with misinformation, videos are made about it. These videos then inspire more videos and more articles, giving Google more seemingly reliable sources to show you when you search. This is a self-fulfilling feedback loop that eventually sees exoplanet misinformation make it to the top of Google search results. Also, this should be obvious, but don't use AI like ChatGPT for space information. AI is not a reliable source, and never will be for the foreseeable future. When an AI doesn't know the answer to something, it hallucinates false information and says something that sounds right. For example, to test this, I asked ChatGPT how far away the moon was from Earth 3.5 billion years ago. It gave me a wrong answer after wrong answer until eventually it settled on 110 million kilometers. That number is completely absurd, and for comparison, is half the distance to Mars. For anything more than the most basic information, AI has no idea what it's talking about. There are simply less examples of it in its dataset, leading to more and more inaccurate information the more advanced a question is asked. Do not use AI for exoplanet information. The biggest source of exoplanet misinformation today is AI like this. So, what are some actually reliable sources for space information? First off, there's a website called Archive where many astronomy papers are. It can be hard to read scientific papers at first, but this is what I personally do because popular media often gets things wrong. Even otherwise very reliable sites can get exoplanet stuff wrong very easily because exoplanet science is very complicated and not many people are informed enough to make good articles. That's not a bad thing, exoplanet science is an extremely hard topic to be well informed on, as I've hopefully shown. But for now, you should stick to the actual scientific papers written by real scientists. I'll be linking archive in the description. There are some other good sites, like phys.org, and very good science channels, which I gave in my J1407B myth video. Also, surprisingly, Wikipedia is actually decently reliable when it comes to exoplanets. I know several people who spend hours of their day constantly improving Wikipedia exoplanet articles, and the exoplanet section of the site has actually gotten pretty good. There are still problems, and you should always use the sources Wikipedia provides, but for a general overview, it's good enough. It can be extremely difficult to avoid misinformation about space, simply because of how common it is and how hard it is to properly communicate. Your best bet for now is to always check the original scientific papers relating to whatever topic you're reading about, and I have the link to archive in the description. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.